Hi, this is Julie with Beataholic, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this fall inspired earring featuring a tiara cast button and what looks like a chain tassel that we just created with multiple strands of chain hung from a jump ring. So, very easy to make and a really pretty little design. So, the key to this project is using a button with a shank, and I've pulled out a couple other buttons by tiara cast. You can see some of them are very different in style but they all have this great shank on the back that we're gonna be using to attach jump rings to and secure our chain and our earring hook as well. And a quick little design tip is you could use the same basic pattern with any button like this. And you just go ahead and swap out the button and then maybe even swap out the color of the beads hanging from it or put a different bead down there altogether. It could be a crystal bead, it could be a check glass bead, whatever you really like. So what you're going to need for this particular project is you're going to need the tiara cast button, which I have right here. Of course, you'll need two of them for this project when you're creating a pair of earrings. You're going to need some chain, and I actually picked out two shades of gold, so two colors of gold chain here. There's an antique and there's a bright gold, and a foot of each for this project, and that's to make both pairs of earrings. These are long Magatama beads, and I really like them because in this application, I think they mimic the look of a leaf, which uh, is kind of nice. I like that. Five millimeter jump rings, and then a pair of earring hooks. And I'm using this one right here. And I pulled these guys as well, which are little lever backs. I would have liked the look of these on here, but because they don't have a closed loop, it would have made it so that the jump ring that the earring hook is attached to could potentially slip off of it. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're debating what type of earring hook to use for this project. You're gonna want one with a closed loop. Then in terms of the tools you're going to need, two pairs of chain nose pliers to open and close your jump rings, a pair of cutters to cut your chain, and then I have a little head pin right here that I'm gonna use as a tool for measuring my chain. You're gonna see that in one moment, and then a ruler. So let's start by cutting our chain. So we're gonna want, of the antique gold color, two lengths that are 1.5 inches long each. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and measure out one length. And we're just gonna cut through a chain link to separate it. Now here's a little trick. We are actually done with our ruler. Go ahead and put the head pin through the last chain link. Then grab your length of uncut chain and slide on the last chain link of that length. And now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this a little bit backwards because it's a little easier with me being right-handed to view it from this angle, but you wouldn't be able to see that on camera. So we just go ahead and line up the chains and cut through the link. Okay, so now we should have two lengths that are the same. So we use the first one to measure the second one. It looks like I got one extra little chain link on there. I'm gonna cut it off. Okay, now we're gonna do the same for the gold chain as well, the bright gold. So just slip on the last chain link. Line it up and cut. We're gonna keep doing that. Now you'll notice sometimes when you cut through a chain link, what happened right here is it did cut it in half, but part of that chain link is still there. Just take your chain nose pliers and wiggle it and it will pull right out. And that's just because sometimes when the chain is plated, it just ends up um, kind of sticking a little bit, which doesn't affect the look of it, but when you do try to cut it, sometimes you end up with a little piece of chain left. So because I was doing this at kind of a weird angle for the camera, I wanna just double check that my chains are even. So it looks like my antique gold ones are a little bit longer, so I'm just gonna cut off the bottom chain link of both of those. But if you're doing this at home, you can hold it however is most comfortable for you and 
really be able to see your chain links. Okay, there we go. So we've got those ready, and now we're gonna take our chain nose pliers and attach our long magatamas to the end of our chain links. So go ahead and open the jump ring. If you're not familiar with how to, you just grab the jump ring on either side of the opening. The opening is up top and you twist it open. And we're just going to slip on the long magatama and the end chain link. And then close it back up. And you'll wanna make sure that your jump ring is fully closed. The long magatamas are a little bit of a tight fit on the size jump ring. I just didn't wanna go larger because of the um, visual appearance. I wanted to keep the jump ring as small as possible. So just make sure it's really nice and closed tightly. There we go. We're gonna do that for all of our chain links. Okay, we are now ready to attach these guys now to our button. To do that, open up another jump ring and you're gonna slide on the chains in the following order. So you want one of the bright golds one of the antique golds, another bright gold, another antique, and another bright. then take your button, slide that jump ring through the shank of the button and close it. So now they're gonna dangle playfully below the button and now we just need to attach the earring hook. And to do that, open another jump ring, slide onto it a closed jump ring. It's just a, I should mention it's an open jump ring, the same ones we've been using, it's just in the closed position. Uh, as opposed to an actual closed jump ring, which has no opening. You don't need to buy a separate pack of jump rings for that. Okay, one more and the earring hook. So we're gonna go ahead, open up one more jump ring. You could slide on the earring hook at this point, so you've got it open. You wanna slide on the earring hook, but you wanna make sure it's properly oriented. So it goes into your ear with the earring facing forward, of course. And then close that jump ring and you are done. There is your pair of fall inspired earrings using some chain, a tear cast button, some long mongatamas, and just some simple findings and really simple tools. You can find all the supplies for this project as well as additional buttons to choose from at beadaholic.com.